Hey everyone, welcome back. So I'm on the popular island of Santorini in Greece to go and check out the island because it is a lot more than what you might think. You may have seen Instagram photos, you may have seen TV shows, you may have seen YouTube videos on Santorini, but what is it really like? This is the town of Ia. It is very pretty, but what is the rest of the island like? It actually has got beaches and a lot of people don't think of Santorini and beaches that they go together, but it does have a few. We'll go and check them out and so much more. Come with me. drive already having to use mostly first gear I'm not even at the top yet but there is already some breathtaking views so to get one of the best views in Santorini you don't need to drive to Ia you just need to drive up a rather steep hill and come here on the southeast of the island to get one of the best views come on park my car there but be prepared it is extremely windy up here There's actually a monastery up here too. You can see over there towards the airport when you come in to Santorini. And what's great about coming up here if you have a hire car is that there's not many excursions that come up here. So it won't ever be too busy. And here we are, breathtaking views over Santorini. You can see the caldera over there, Ia in the far distance. And what's also good about coming up here is you can visit the monastery as well, which is absolutely beautiful. Let's have a, a quick look inside. Look at that. You have to be very quiet. First thing I've noticed, it might be a monastery, but it's open for tourists. There's not many monasteries that I've ever seen with a vending machine inside. But we can head in to one of the little mini churches. Something Santorini does have a lot of are these mini churches. Look at the way the chairs are all around the side. That is beautiful. You have to have long arms. But this view is also amazing too. So we're looking over the southwest I think it's southwest, southeast, and southwest of the island. You've got Red Beach over there. One of the main beaches, Black Beach, is over there and just around the corner as well. So, like I say, coming up here, you get views of the whole island. You, you might not be able to stand and get a whole 360 degree, but you get a good view from this side. I didn't expect to see a gift shop in a monastery. What kind of stuff are they selling? Three euros? All hand painted as well. Crosses you can buy, little pendants. Wow, look at these little plates. How cute are they? Now, compared to Ia, where you buy trinkets for Santorini, they'll be a lot more expensive. I mean, yeah, it's, it's a trek up here, but actually from here, it's around about 25 minutes. From the middle of the island, it's about 15 minutes. So why wouldn't you come up here? If you've seen any of my videos, you'll know that I always go on about hiring a car. It's the best way to go and see anywhere you stay. Uh, you can go off the beaten track. And this car in Santorini cost me 80 pound to hire for three days. Now the lady said that I was getting a free upgrade. Nissan Micra, which has seen slightly better days. Now again, it's around about a 700 pound deposit or you can pay 70 euros uh, to get the deposit down to zero. And it also covers you for scratches. And let's face it, it might not be your fault. People might actually just knock into the car. They might open the door onto the car and then bam, they've charged you 700 euros on your credit card. So I always say, if it's affordable, go for the extra insurance. 
Now, something you don't associate with Santorini quite a lot is beaches, but there are quite a few. In fact, there's black, there's red, and there's white. Yes, there's black beach, white beach, and red beach. We'll start here on Black Beach, which is one of the biggest and one of the best beaches on the island. So along the whole seafront here, there's loads of different beach bars. There's also a place to get a hammock. I'm just trying to figure out how you get into a hammock because this could be quite embarrassing. I'm not quite sure which way to start sitting in it. I've seen so many people injure themselves on hammocks. Let's hope I'm not one of those statistics. Here we go. Okay. <laughs> well, I'm not really in. Ah. Yes, I'm in. Oh, this is the life. Hammocks, easy. Get some fresh barbecued sweet corn. Wow, <laughs> check that out. There's loads of flavours on there as well, look. A bit of lemon. Garlic. And something you don't normally associate with Santorini. Water sports and jet skis down here on the beach. But obviously it's volcanic and um, it's very stony. It's also extremely hot. So if you're walking around with no flip-flops on, your feet will get burnt. And just off the beach as well, a little seafront with loads of restaurants. It could be any Greek island. Some nice seafood restaurants, actually. And being Santorini, they do things a little bit classier. There's plenty of beach clubs here as well. And another famous beach on the island is Red Beach. Let's go and check it out. The reason will become clear why it's called Red Beach in a moment. It's nice there's a cafe up here actually. Bit of a sun trap there. Get roasted. So there is two entrances to Red Beach. There's one that, that's further down and there's this one. This one's slightly better because obviously there's a cafe close by. How much are they? 20 euros. A lot of the tourists get dropped off over there. As you can see, there's quite a few people over there. You get a better view of Red Beach from over there, especially when the sun goes around a little bit more. Even the beach here obviously has that red tinge to it from the cliffs. The beach does look a lot more dramatic from up here, so we'll have a climb up. I'm trying to come up here in uh, flip-flops, probably not a great idea. It's weird, isn't it? It isn't the best beach in the world, let's be honest. It's not overly that nice to lay on, but it's a tourist attraction here in Santorini because of the redness of the beach and the cliffs. I suggest you come down here in the morning because later in the afternoon, it gets extremely busy. Now, what slightly concerns me walking next to the cliff is all of this will just fall away. And I don't know if you can see it, but just there, there's a huge crack in that and they don't do anything to protect it. They just say, you know, be careful when walking down to Red Beach. But yeah, that's a bit of a disaster waiting to happen. So I'm a bit nervous walking near that. I'm gonna do it quick if I run. <laughs> so the last beach is White Beach and it's only accessible by boat. You can take a boat for 15 euros and actually you can visit Red Beach, White Beach and Black Beach. So yeah, it's only accessible by boat, but like I say, you can go and see the other beaches by car. Wow, everything in Santorini is expensive. So I've got a bit of a headache. I thought I'd go into the pharmacy to get some paracetamol and ibuprofen. It cost me nine euros. So if you are coming from the UK, make sure you go and get those 40p paracetamol before you come out here. It will save you a lot of money. So there's a lot of sightseeing in Santorini, but if you're ever in the car and you drive past this place, the Los Atlantis Experience, I suggest you go in there because you can learn about the history, the geology of how Santorini was formed, and more importantly, how 
it could have been the birthplace to the lost city of Atlantis, which was, in theory, in the middle of the caldera. And then, of course, the second largest eruption known to man happened, which, of course, wiped out the whole civilization. But do you believe it? Let's go and check it out. There's also a 9D cinema in there. Costs you 14 euros to get in here. The floor is lava. <laughs> Oh, we we'll have to start from here. Stand here to begin. Oh, I see, right. <laughs> so this is pretty cool. It tells you all about how Santorini was formed and how after, you know, that second biggest eruption in human history, we lost the city of Atlantis, possibly. Hello, thank you. Thank you. So it is also a 9D cinema. This will be interesting. I've heard of 4D. I've heard of 5D. Don't think I've heard of 6 or 7D. And I definitely haven't heard of 9D. So this should be good. I've got earphones. I've got glasses. And this is... Uh, little model of what it could have looked like and here look you can hold the powerful trident of Poseidon you can grip onto it wave right hand and I can be dressed as a lady look at that oh, hang on gone well for the price 14 euros yeah, I guess it was okay. The 9D experience, but it was great to learn about some of the archaeological finds that proves that that city did exist. But was it the lost city of Atlantis? Tell me in the comments. So sunset is almost upon us, just looking over the caldera there and over to Thira, which is where I'm going to go for a little bit of a walk this evening. I think a lot of the cruise ships, are they heading out? Because normally it gets very busy over there. Um, this is actually quite a nice place to come for sunset. You can probably see Ia right in the distance there. But let's head to Thera. Now it gets pretty busy at sunset in Thera. And uh, this is one of the few car parks here. Certainly is a busy evening here. A lot of people choose to stay here because it's actually fairly cheap compared to Ia. Some amazing places to eat though. These narrow streets get very busy. Well, sunset is one of the busiest times to come into the city we're gonna go down here a little bar here look at the view wow literally all these streets are so narrow and people are just winding their way through them trying to get a seat for sunset. Hello. You don't like people, it's probably not the best place to come because you just can barely move. You can see over there, that's the uh, Royal Caribbean Odyssey of the Seas. I so want to go on that ship. It's got like a water park on it and everything. It's just nice just to wander around the streets. There are literally restaurants absolutely everywhere. Unlike Ia, you don't need to book tables here. There are so many restaurants. It really is amazing they've managed to fit all this in. There's so many restaurants. One thing you will come across is um, donkey poo in the streets. See the donkeys go up and down here, taking people's luggage and other items. Ah, oh, look at this. This is lovely. Imagine having dinner there. I do have dinner reservations tonight in Ia. 
um, but because it gets so busy I can't book around sunset so I have to go later on in the evening which is a little bit of a shame but what can I do oh, just stepped in donkey people I don't know how the donkeys do it up and down these steep steps especially during the heat of the day so no matter what we say and do they probably won't ever stop doing it but at the same time doesn't mean that I'm going to use them to put my luggage on You've got to remember that thousands of people come up here every single day, which creates a lot of mess coming off the cruise ships as well. And if you've ever wondered how all the tourists get up from the cruise ships, they go on this cable car, which brings them up pretty fast, actually. And just so you see the sheer weight of people coming off the cruise ships, this is the queue for the cable car. keeps going and going and actually it stretches all the way around here to the end here that's a long queue and if you want to get the money shot being here in Santorini three bells of Fera just here and at sunset obviously there's no path here so people kind of stand just there and get their photos taken and if you've always wanted to know what one of these looks like inside we can go in we do have to be quiet it's coming up to Harper State at sunset so everyone's enjoying the sunset they're not coming in here but uh, I just wanted to show you this wow I'm glad that no one else was in there because that was quite a unique experience. Best time to come and visit, obviously, one of these old churches at sunset. When everyone's enjoying the sunset, everyone's having dinner, they're not bothered about coming in here. So sunset has just happened. I thought I'd get myself a drink. This cost me 18 euros. It has got some alcohol in it. Um, it's even got a bamboo straw. <coughs> Cheers. Morning, so I've come to Ia first thing in the morning because apparently this is when it's not as busy. It's still extremely hot. It's 10 o'clock and it's like 36 degrees. Whew, very warm. So I'm here to check out the Blue Domed Church of Santorini, which apparently is very nice. Also gonna have a walk around the beautiful streets of Ia. Let's go. Oh, by the way, this also is a, is a great place to have a photo because of that backdrop. Now it's quite scary when you think about it. As you look around the volcano rim, you realize that all this is the caldera, the middle of the volcano, and obviously all the sides would have been all the way up. And then when this exploded, remember this was the second largest explosion in history. It cooled temperatures around the earth by two degrees. It must have been hell on earth being here when it erupted. I mean, it had a sonic boom that went halfway around the world. I mean, just crazy. And now, some say paradise on earth. And first thing you notice when you come to Ia is that the streets are all laced in marble. Compared to Thea over there, which the streets don't overly look that great, this is lovely. Not so great when it's raining though. And even when it's not raining, it can be quite slippy. So these streets are laced with restaurants, boutique hotels, and amazing views over the caldera. Look at that, look, a bit of a photo shoot going on. That's what you'll see on a lot of postcards for Greece. The shops are quite expensive up here though, I'm not going to lie. People using umbrellas here it's for the sun to be off them, which is probably quite a good idea. This is also so pretty at night. Definitely worth... Now if you come up here at sunset like I did the other night, it was just ridiculously busy. More little cave houses down there, look. You can actually book this out to get married or for a proposal. They can put flowers everywhere and turn those on at sunset. I think it costs quite a lot of money though. 
You can also get married here. Look at that for a view though. Imagine doing your vows in there. Look at those little mini blue dome churches. You find yourself popping into these shops just to cool down because walking along here, even in the morning, it can be so hot. So to get to the famous Blue Dome Church here in Santorini, we kind of have to go through some of these houses. You can see a collection of people over there who are taking photos of it. It's kind of hidden from view. It's obviously where it gets busy. You might see this in a lot of videos of Santorini. People trying to push past and you're getting very busy. There's these tour guides taking photographs and charging you for it everywhere. beautiful church that's not the church we're after you can see all the people going in there this is the church we're after almost there and there's no real sign to it to be honest but you go left here the only reason why people know is because uh, the amount of footfall coming through here even though I've seen people with drones, mine's stock footage. And here is the money shot. You can walk a little further down as well. All these are little cave houses. Someone else taking photos, look. So that was my tour of Santorini. Tell me what you thought in the comments. Is it what you thought it would be? For me, um, Ia and Thea are as what I thought it would be. Beautiful streets, tiny little towns, blue domed churches. But the rest of the island isn't as beautiful as this makes out, unfortunately. But it's still definitely worth coming here. And in fact, a lot of people that I've spoken to, when they come to Santorini, they come to Ia or Thea and they don't really go anywhere else. And if they come on a cruise ship, this is all they see of the island. So that's probably why it gets this reputation that it does. Don't come in July and August like I have because it's ridiculously busy. Although to be fair, it's not as busy as I thought it would be. Sunsets are the most busiest. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. If you want to see more of the Greek islands, check out my videos here or here and I'll see you next time. And it's going to cool down.